Our conditions have changed in Pakistan. I mean, um, uh, the demands are growing on the Indian side. Uh, so I think uh, if the if the central government works with this, the regional sub regional sentiments, uh, we should be able to find way out in the years ahead. <laughs>
you know, national level diplomacy, but as something that would, you know, substitute, complement, uh, work with uh, rather than against. I think in the case of uh, the subcontinent, uh, the nature of the partition of the subcontinent uh, and the overlap of ethnic uh, communities all across. I mean, we have, say, at least eight sovereignties in South Asia, uh, but the, historically, this was a single space. Uh, so how we manage this, uh, you know, you can't change territories uh, every every often, but what you can change is the nature of the borders, uh, that you facilitate greater cooperation, reduce conflict, uh, make it easier people for travel, meet families, meet uh, visit pilgrimages. Uh, all these are part of our lives which have been disrupted and frozen by the militarization of the conflict. Uh, so I think there are ways in which I think the governments have talked about it. Uh, and my sense is each time you get somewhere, uh, something else happens. But I think in the case of Punjab and Bangladesh, uh, we've seen some progress in the case of Bangladesh. So uh, we shouldn't be utterly pessimistic about the possibilities with Pakistan, because within Pakistan, some groups are beginning to talk. But there are also issues in other areas. For example, uh, the ethnic Tamil overlay between Sri Lanka and Tamil Nadu. Uh, while the DMK, the Tamil parties express solidarity, uh, but they're also very so hostile to Colombo. They limit the room for maneuver for, for any central government. And at the same time, uh, on issues, for example, on the fishermen, where actually the Tamils are involved on both sides. So I think the need to find solutions that benefit people on the frontiers, uh, I think it's a, is a, is a, is a challenge. And I think we've not taken it up too seriously, but I think this is something the next government will hopefully take up. And also, I would say, those of us who are outside the government, uh, governments, uh, the think tanks, the media, I think we need also to pay more attention to what happens on the frontiers. So the foreign policy is not just about what the foreign officers do, but the feelings, sentiments of people on the frontiers, uh, where their lives, uh, how they get so linked to uh, national politics, but, but their lives are tied to the people on the other side. So I think we need to do a little more as well, covering the uh, challenges, for example, right now in Burma, as the state collapses in the north, uh, the impact on you know the northeastern provinces is already beginning to be felt. Uh, so hopefully we can begin to present that look. Uh, it's not just in in the case of part you know in the case of Burma and northeast there are issues Bangladesh and northeast, Sri Lanka uh, and uh, Tamil Nadu, uh, all these areas where I think uh, a, a new empathy for people on the ground. Uh, I think would make our uh, foreign policy a little more enlightened and a little more uh, productive over the longer term, I believe. Uh, last question, going back to Pakistan, just from what you said, you know, there are voices within Pakistan. I mean, I think Shehbaz Sharif, Prime Minister, recently said this trade traders have been delegated to resume some basic stuff with India. But, you know, that, that old thing you run into when you talk about India, Pakistan, Pakistan in particular, is that sooner or later, that, the, that it, since it's driven by the logic of a military, which is trying to reform itself, which is trying to say geoeconomics and all these kinds of things. But sooner or later, to do the even to do say something like this, two state governments talking to each other and just doing some very small people to people exchanges of, in whatever sense. Do you think? I mean that it sooner or later will come up against that uh, requiring an overhaul of the Pakistani system because at the end, you know, it all goes back to the centralized uh, this thing, which is not driven necessarily by the logic of the people. I mean this yeah. sort of democratic pro people logic. No, you see, traditionally, it's been the army that vetoed proposals for cooperation. But interestingly, in 2021, it was actually General Bajuha was actually trying to open a door uh, because he was having this negotiation. His team was having negotiations with Mr. Dovel and his team. Uh, they were creating openings, but Imran Khan uh, took the so civilian leader actually vetoed uh, what was trying to be trying to be done. So, but I think there is no alternative but to patiently build this because I think. Uh, conditions have changed in Pakistan. I mean, um, uh, the demands are growing on the Indian side. Uh, so I think uh, if the if the central government works with this, the regional, sub-regional sentiments, uh, we should be able to find way out uh, in the in the years ahead. But my sense is we made some progress in, in Bangladesh. And I think a lot more can be done in uh, other areas as well, on the Burma frontier, the Pakistan frontier, not just in Punjab. I mean, now... Uh, uh, Sindh and Gujarat. I mean, have, there's a lot they can do together between Bombay and Karachi. There's a lot that they can be done, uh, as well as between uh, South India and Sri Lanka. 
So thank you so much, everyone. Please read the piece. It has a lot more than what we talked about. And send us your comment, send us a mail, <laughs> and we'll see you next week. Sir. Thank you, sir.